Everybody, it's Jenny Brandon, and I'm back for another episode of my vlog, Work in Progress. And today I am so excited to be chatting with the amazing Gina Kufari and Carla Merrifield as we are talking about our brand new project, Sisters of the COVID Moon. And so just a little bit about these amazing women. So Gina is a bassoonist and soprano. She's dynamic and versatile, obviously, and she performs a variety of roles in New York City as an orchestral musician, a chamber musician, soloist, new music advocate, and an educator. She's the co-principal bassoonist of the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra. And for over a decade, she's been with this group and has performed and recorded with them throughout the US, Europe, and Asia. And as an educator, Gina is currently uh, holds positions at NYU and Western Connecticut State University, where she teaches bassoon, coaches chamber music, and teaches a variety of other amazing classes. And Carla Lynn Merrifield is an amazing poet and writer. She's a nine time Pushcart Prize nominee and National Park Artist in Residence and has over 900 plus poems appearing in dozens of journals and anthologies and has 14 books to her credit. She's currently at work on a poetry collection called My Body, the Guitar, is inspired by famous guitarists and their guitars and is slated to be published in December of 2021 by Before Your Quiet Eye publications holograph series and Carla is also a photographer and her pictures have appeared in um, um, books and magazines such as Outdoor Sea Stories, The Centrifugal Eye among many other magazines and publications and she is also a budding guitarist. So welcome Gina, welcome Carla, you fabulous talented women. <laughs> Thank you so much Jenny, thanks for having us today. So excited to chat with you both about our project and this, this new work, um, Sisters of the COVID Moon, um, which I think is going to become um, what I'm going to say a time capsule for the era and the time that we're in, we're still in and that we're going through. So I just want to start here with Gina. And I just wanted to talk to you about how, how this project really started. And, you know, you as a bassoonist and a soprano, um, I know it started from there. Maybe tell us to back up, to tell us a little bit about your passion for creating projects for you to play and sing. Sure. Well, thank you very much again. Thanks for having me. It's a thrill to be here. <laughs> um, and I just want to say, you know, this this whole thing started, I, I want to say, was it the summer of 2019? 2019. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yes, I remember I contacted you. I think it was in July mm -hmm. and I did so because I had started kind of on this journey of creating um, projects, pieces for myself in which I would both sing and play the bassoon. Mm -hmm. These are my two instruments that I have always adored since I was a kid. Um, of course, I, you know, when you're five years old, you can use this instrument to sing, right? I wasn't quite playing the bassoon yet, but um, I've always had a passion for singing. Um, 11 years old, 12 years old is when I started playing the bassoon. Mm -hmm. And those two instruments kind of instantly melded together. And I've always mm -hmm. felt, even though I've created a, a career for myself as a bassoonist, I've always really thought of myself as first and foremost, a musician mm -hmm. who happens to use the bassoon as a tool to create music and also my voice to create music. Um, it's been, well, as in any career, you know, trying to establish yourself in any career, it's very difficult. And so I really had to focus purely on bassoon <laughs> for, sure. for most of these years. Um, but recently, I'd say the past three, four, five years, I've really been missing singing. 
And mm-hmm. I really wanted to find a way to just kind of get back into it and have a reason to practice, have a reason to be in good shape and have a reason to get up on the stage and sing. And so I, mm-hmm. I decided, you know, I'm going to start to talk to some composer friends of mine, composers who I admire, like Jenny, um, and see if they would be interested in creating new works for this kind of strange combination of <laughs> singing bassoonist. Um, so that's kind of how it all happened, how it all started. I um, I worked with a few friends of mine and had good good experiences um, working on, on new pieces. Mm-hmm. And I in, in 2019, I remember that summer, I was up in Idlewild, California. My right. husband works at the Idlewild um, Summer Festival up there. And for two weeks, I always go up there and do nothing. <laughs> and it's just a really good way to decompress and to kind of wrap my head around what's going to be happening in the coming year. And I just decided to call you up, Jenny. It just, mm-hmm. I remember. <laughs> I'm just going to call her up and just see what she thinks about this idea. Um, so as I said, I've, I've always admired your work. I knew you were a singer. Mm-hmm. I knew you'd written for voice and of course for bassoon, so many incredible works for bassoon. Mm-hmm. So I thought, oh, here's the perfect person to perhaps write a piece, if she's interested, to write a piece <laughs> for me. Um, so that's how it started. And we started the conversation. That's amazing. Yeah. And I remember you calling me from Idlewild because of course Idlewild is just like two hours away from where I live here in Southern California. I was like, what? You're in <laughs> Idlewild? That's amazing. It's such a great, amazing place. Well, and what's interesting, Gina, you're saying about, you know, knowing, knowing my works and, you know, just reaching out to me in the same way, I feel like it's sort of a a circle that comes back around to Carla then, because, you know, we started talking about a project and we're like, oh, you know, a little bit down the road, you know, we're talking about like what our theme wants to be. And uh, Carla, I immediately, I thought of you, we started thinking about text and how we wanted to do this. And I, I realized I was like, oh, here's a poet that whose poetry I love. And I actually pulled this out for my show and tell this is the lithic scatter book here of Carla's, right? Here's a little uh, promotion here. (laughs) Um, As you can see, it's all marked up because it's all the poems that I ever want to set. I feel like most of it is, most of it is marked. I should probably mark the pages that like, maybe I'll save for later because this will be years of, of setting stuff here. (laughs) It's great. Um, But I thought of you Carla right away. And I just, I love how we have this connection between the three of us and just that way of like, one person says it's, it's a chain, right. Where one person says, starts, starts the chain reaction. And then we go, Oh, but I know a person, um, to do this. And so, um, I wanted to, I wanted to ask, so, so Gina, you and I started to talk about this idea for the piece and wanting to tell the story of women. Um, and <clears throat> we m- started talking about this idea of telling the story of women during the pandemic and, Carla, when we approached you about that, um, tell us a little bit about your thought process as you began to sort of think about what it would mean to set text or write poetry about women during the pandemic. Well, I think what happened at our very first, the meeting that we first had, the three of us, and we, you know, ideas just started bubbling up and we Mm. uh, focused in on, um, you know, the idea of using real women's voices or stories and, and trying uh, as, as uh, encyclopedic as it sounds uh, to cover, you know, women of all walks of life, women of all ages, um, women, uh, you know, div- uh, racially diverse women. Um, and it, you know, it was like, you know, but their, their stories, their real mm. words, um, and what became um, the libretto, which I have never had never done a libretto. I mean, I've kind of written some, you know, song lyrics, but um, became this incredible journey of of uh, reading and research. Who who are they? What are they saying? Mm. Um, 
and and stitching their words. It's their words. I thank them. I just I just knitted them together. Mm. Uh, and that became um, the beautiful words that that Gina brought to life and that you colored with your mm. with your music. Well, and the I, I'm backing up a little bit. I realized I kind of jumped forward. Now I'm going to go backwards. <laughs> you know, I got so excited to talk about our origin story here with this. But, um, you know, with the piece being, you know, just for folks that are, you know, just getting to know this piece that, you know, this piece tells the story of women in the pandemic, just like Carla said, of you know, different walks of life, you know, from all over, um, you know, in the United States, like really like digging into this story of these women, what everybody went through, you know, younger, older. Um, and so it started though, backing it up with Gina, you had this idea about telling a story of a friend of yours who had a particularly moving story. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say that mm -hmm. for me, that's how it all started. And actually, I want to back up even further. You know, we had this initial conversation in the summer of 2019. Mm -hmm. But you know, no, you were busy. I was busy. We said, okay, why don't we put this on hold? Let's let's let this marinate. Let's mm -hmm. talk about this. You know, maybe in the new year. And then, of course, when that happened. We were all, I think, Jenny, we, we may have talked maybe in March, like right when everything started. And then I think so. Many, many, many times after that. Yeah. But Carla, yeah, when, when the three of us got together, it was right in, it was still kind of at the beginning, but we were in the thick of it. All of us, mm. right, were experiencing our unique kind of struggles and challenges at the yeah. time. And I remember telling you you know, about my daughter and how she was having some struggles. Um, and as a mother, you know, the kind of the unique struggles that we are going through. And, you know, so for me, that was my starting point. It was like, mm -hmm. wow, you know, all of our kids are at home trying to learn on a computer. You know, this is, this is crazy. This is ridiculous. So that, you know, for so many women out there, that was a, a huge struggle initially. Right. But, um, this friend of mine is actually my daughter's best friend's mother. And over the years, we've become the families have become very close. You know, she had a uniquely tricky situation. She, in March of 2020, she was five months pregnant. She has two daughters at home, you know, struggling with, with at home uh, remote learning. But the kicker is that she's a nurse. Mm -hmm. And she's not just a nurse, but she works the night shift. Okay, so here you have an essential worker. She's being exposed to COVID pretty much every day, mm -hmm. even though she, she, you know, she tried to not work at, wherever her supervisor put her. That's where she had to work, right? right? So she's being exposed to COVID, an overwhelmingly hard situation up mm -hmm. here. I, I live in Connecticut. It's, everybody knows initially you know the east coast new york city area was hit very very hard um you know hospitals are overflowing so she's in this crazy pressurized situation she's pregnant nobody knows how covid affects unborn children yet she yeah. doesn't want to bring covid home to her family but how is she supposed to know if that's going to happen or not She's working the night shift. So during the day, she usually sleeps. But now her kids are at home struggling with online school. Oh. And this poor woman, I mean, I, it was just, you know, and you think, okay, this is just one person's struggle. Every single one of us had, had all sorts of issues. But for me, the, the hardest part of it it was when I would talk to her, I realized how isolated she was and mm -hmm. how isolated all of us were. We were all suffering in silence, right? We couldn't get together with, with friends to kind of get that cathartic sort of um, community, um, you know, therapy that we would usually be able to do in a tough situation. So it just, it dawned on me that there were so many people struggling in unique ways that it would be really good for us to bring those voices to the fore and to just have them be heard mm. 
And then as Jenny yes. said, you really just have this as a documentation of this time in our history. Yeah. This is something we will never forget. I mean, we're still in the middle of the middle of it, but, um, yeah, for me, sorry, I went on a long tangent here, but that was really the catalyst yeah. for me and wanting to, um, to really kind of amplify these, these voices yeah. of women. Over, over the course of history, women's stories have been so easily erased. I mean, mm. we get a copy of a Pioneer Women's Journal, and it's such a treasure that that even exists. And the three of us um, have come together to help in our own personal ways and with our own personal talents to, to preserve this story of these women. and. Um, and you, you know, you can hear yourself. I think, you know, there isn't a woman who will listen to this, who won't hear herself somewhere reflected Agreed. in, in, in the composition and, and the, and the words that came to life. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, it really is a historical document. Um, I, th I think so. Yeah. And I think that it's, it's the story. I mean, it's the classic storytelling, right? I mean, like this sort of, you know, you think about people used to, you know, pass the stories down in words, right? They weren't writing them down. They were passing them down orally in this oral tradition. So I think there's an and often accompanied by music. Exactly. And so I feel like we're really digging into the, um, the foundation of storytelling with this and, you know, and, and, you know, dramatic storytelling, because Gina, like that was the one thing that you and I talked about. And then of course, Carla, you know, we'd all talked about this together was we didn't just want this to be a piece that was like, oh, you get on stage, you know, and you stand there and you, you know, we're just going to sing. Like we had this, we have this bigger vision for this piece. Like, you know, like we, we, we see it. I mean, yes, you get on stage and you perform it because that's what you do. <laughs> but like, we have this bigger vision that this piece is, um, it's not just an art song. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, it's not just an art song. It's really actually something that is um, more dramatic in that sense. And I mean, it comes from the, the words, Carla, the libretto that you created for this and, you know, stitching these stories together. And it comes from, you know, Gina's performance, which you will all see. Um, here is my plug at IDRS, International Double Read Society, um, during the week of July 26th through the 31st, um, we will be having the world premiere of this work, Sisters of the COVID Moon, on um, July 27th. I did it. That's right. July 27th at um, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, 2 p.m. Eastern and 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific. What you will be seeing is really just the first iteration of this, mm -hmm. right? Like the first reading, I have to say, you know, because of the different timelines and things that ended up shifting and changing for the IDRS right. uh, <laughs> online symposium, uh, we kidding. had, it was, there was crunch time. Like we had, we learned the piece in, in a few days. Amazing. And, um, so this was really just a first reading of the piece. And I just want to make that clear, you know, ultimately our goal 
is to have this staged, you know, to have, to really have the performer, and we can talk about this too, Jenny, mm -hmm. you know, how your your vision for really expanding this and, and, and including more than just two people on stage. Mm -hmm. um, but to have the singer or singer slash bassoonist really embody these women and, um, and um, kind of immerse herself in into the experience and to really act it out, you know, to, to, to have it staged, to have it be more of almost an operetta. Exactly. Um, yeah. A, a real theatrical experience is our, is our, is our goal for this yeah. um, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, and talking about the performance, you know, that everyone's going to get to see here um, there's, you know, this beauty of simplicity of having this for soprano bassoon and piano where, I mean, it's very, it feels very intimate too. Like, and especially with like the videography and everything, it's very intimate, but Gina, maybe you could speak a little bit to us about that experience or how it feels to play and sing, because this is so unique. Like there aren't a lot of people doing this and doing it at such a high level that you're doing it. What does that feel like to perform uh, on your instrument and sing and switch back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it, for me, it's actually kind of a natural, natural thing to do. Um, because singing and playing a woodwind instrument is very, very similar. Right. Oh. So we, we use our air support to sing and we use air support to play. Um, of course, embouchure for, especially for a double reed instrument, um, is very, very different <laughs> from singing. We use a lot of tension to create our embouchure when we play. In singing, you have to eradicate all of that tension in order to get, a, you know, the best, most resonant sound possible. Um, but a lot of it, the way that I create sound when I sing um, versus when I play is very similar. If you mm. Think about what a double reed looks like. Hold up, actually, you can see back here in my. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> um, you know, a reed, you know, the opening of a reed, if we do this, I don't know if you can mm. see it. Mm. That's what our vocal cords look like, actually, yeah. right? When yeah. we speak or sing, you're sending air through those two little, little flaps, they vibrate against each other yep. pretty much very minimally. Same thing happens when you blow through a bassoon reed. So the mechanism to create your vibration mm. is actually very similar. Mm. Um, so again, the, the, the breath support, the, the air support, um, that is all the same. And the way that we kind of voice, you know, when you sing, you, you, know, you have to create the, the right amount of space and the, the, the different vowels and the special kind of megaphone shape that you want to really send the sound out into the universe. We think about that too when we play, at least we should be thinking about that when we play, <laughs> you know, creating different colors, different resonances, different intonations in our mouth, the same way that we voice um, vowels when we sing. Sure. So there are a lot of similarities. So I think because of all of that, um, it feels I know it's crazy just to say this, but it feels very similar, you know, going back and oh. forth to me, the way that I feel in my body here is exactly the same, mm. no matter what instrument I'm playing. Uh -huh. Of course, I have to get to the, to the embouchure. You don't have to get there quickly. Sometimes the changes are very quick. So I think going from singing to playing is a little harder because I have to prepare a little bit more here than um, going from bassooning to singing. Cause I just release everything and let go. And then I'm ready. That's great. <laughs> Does that make sense? It makes total yeah. sense. And it would be the same. I mean, like as a singer, the instrument, your body is the instrument. And as a bassoonist, your instrument might be outside of you, but you're still using your body to create all of that sound. So it's an it, extension. Yeah. It's, it's an extension. extension of your body. Yeah. yeah. It's like having another arm, you know, an right. extra arm, just like that. Completely normal. <laughs> Well, no, I think that's a great description. And, and Carla, I was thinking too, like, as she was talking about, you know, placements of vowels and all of the things that, you know, singers do to get, get into that space to, to create, 
when you're writing your libretto, when you're writing the poetry, especially for this project, like, um, was that something consciously you were really thinking about? Because I mean, what you've written works so well to set to music. So it feels like it, but maybe you've just so, maybe you're just so in tune with, with music, especially now that you're working so much on guitar. I'm just kind of curious what your thought process was as far as it, knowing it was going to be set to music. I think it's a, it's, it's a combination of, yes, I'm a little bit more, I mean, I did have eight years of piano years and years and years ago, but I think, you know, a poet's deal, uh, our, one of our main things is rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then you get the sounds and, and Gina, you mentioned vowels. I mean, there's nothing more important in a, in a lyric, particularly than the vowel sounds and how they, and how they carry over or, um, you know, open up a word. And I think, you know, in writing the, the libretto for Sisters of the COVID Moon, one of the hardest uh, pieces, I mean, the research was, you know, hundreds and hundreds of articles of, and interviews with women in my life. You know, where are you? How do you feel? What's, you know, how do you sum it up? But the, when, when Gina, you, say, you sing the names of the women and it's almost a, a spoken voice instead of a sung voice. Yeah. And I must have spent hours just, I had the, re these are real people, real names. How, how do those names sound when they're put next to each other mm. in a string? Um, and I fussed, I fussed, I, you know, would move Melissa to, to Yvette and, you know, I'd move these names around just to see where, where, where the, most natural rhythm and the prettiest or um, most melodic sounding pattern in just the names themselves. That's amazing. Um, as one example of, you know, it, it, it's your poets are writing music, whether we realize it or not. Oh, yeah. um, and it's just, you know, how do you, how do you interpret it? Um, but it, it, you know, you feel those rhythms. You know? It's, it is. And it's obvious in your writing. And, and I think that's something that makes it um, a, a delight to set and to work on, you know, as a composer, I'm, I sit in the middle of your text for months, <laughs> you know, just there. I mean, like you, you are my whole world, Carla, <laughs> you know, and it's so nice to have, you know, something to really be able to, to, to dig into and to be able to play with it and to create you know, these fluid lines, because the fluidity, like you said, is already, is already there. Like you've already given me the map and that's such a wonderful feeling, which is why I'm so drawn to your, your poetry and your oh, writing, because you. there's a, there's a rhythmic um, structure to it that makes it um, such a, such a joy to, to live with and to work with. Um, and as writing for singers, you know, and working with you, Gina, and thinking about your voice. Like we had extensive conversation about your range, the register, you know, the colors in your voice. And even after I wrote it and you started to rehearse it, we went back and changed some things because you're like, yeah. you know, this should be lower or this could be higher. Yeah. And I, and I love, that's the collaboration that I love. And Carla, you and I did the same thing. We collaborated on the poetry. Like I'd come back to you and said, well, what if we thought about this or that? And you were wonderful at working with me on that. Well, so thank you. And that was, a, that was an interesting exercise for me to mm. that revision that we did, um, not quite 11th hour, but close to it. And I was just, you know, I must have sat with that for, for a day and a half or so, yeah. just those few lines and thought, you know, and then I, you know, I got it, um, yeah. including a little percussive moment. I mean, a tiny one, one syllable word, one little yeah. syllable that would, that I could hear this percussive um, hmm. you know, I could hear the music and why that punctuation, basically, in a way, right. um, it was to, to add to the impact of that, of the particular phrase. Yeah. And it's, it's powerful. And it's interesting when we start to dig into it. And I know, like, we'll continue to dig into it, right? So again, that IDRS performance will be, is a start for us into something bigger and, and staged and more. Um, but it's, it's such a, 
I mean, it's solid. It can stand on its own. It's not like, you know, you guys are going to hear three minutes and be like, well, that was it. Like, no, no, you're going to hear like 25 minutes. It's a big work, (laughs) but you know, it's, but we've got this foundation to build on. And that's what I'm really excited about too. Me too. And yeah, I just want to reiterate that. I mean, this is, this was so crazy. It it really was kind of a rushed process, unfortunately, but I mean, we, I think we still ended up with a nice recording and a nice reading, but I mean, this is really the workshopping part. I mean, we, Mm. Jenny had not heard me sing any of this until the, until I showed her the, it was done. (laughs) Wow. Quickly. Yeah. She gave me the final score. And then three days later, we had to have the video done. Yeah. So we that we I'm like Jenny. I'm sorry, but I have no time to talk right now. We gotta get it done. <laughs> then we'll talk later. But this, but for Jen, I mean, this isn't usually how this works, right? We usually have plenty of time to workshop things, to for you to hear things, to see what works, what doesn't, right? And so this yeah. again, this is just the beginning, and I'm so excited because I know you said, oh. There are some spots here I, I would really love to expand this part, or maybe I want to shift a few things around. Exactly. Um, there, I mean, there are so many ways we can go with it. So, yeah. So, Carla, 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 stay tuned because you'll probably be getting more uh, okay. requests from me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's the beauty of a collaborative process like this. And you're right, Gina. Like this. It, and it's like, I, I think about this with any like theatrical thing, especially even in, you know, opera or musical theater where you workshop things and, but those workshops are these incredible performances that you go to and you're like, okay, that was an experience, but then you grow on that. So that's what I'm really excited about this version because it's such a, it's a, it's such a solid piece of art and it's really exciting to see the work that you, and we need to do a shout out to your husband, Tom who is the spectacular pianist on this. I mean, just amazing. Yeah, Yeah. he's great. I'm very, very, very lucky. I mean, he's my husband, of course I'm lucky, but he's an incredible pianist and he can, he's, he can play anything and he learns things so quickly. And that's what was so crucial, you know, for this in particular, he just, he's just wonderful. And it's, it's so great to work with him and, he was the one that had the connection to our wonderful videographer. Yeah. And I also want to point out, it's just kind of funny because I had never worked with a videographer before. We knew we were going to have to do this really quickly. We, we figured, well, we're not going to have a lot of time to go back and forth and say, oh, we don't like the way this looks and can you edit here? And my husband said, stop worrying. I've worked with him a lot. He's incredible. Yeah. And so he, we didn't see any of it until he sent us the final version. Wow. And that's what you're going to see. I wouldn't have changed a thing. No, nope. except there's one close up of me when I'm playing, he gets really close. I'm like, <laughs> oh, maybe next time don't get too close. <laughs> <laughs> see all the, the inner yeah, workings yeah. of the bassoon face. <laughs> the bassoon, nobody wants to see a bassoon face that close up. Come on. <laughs> I don't care who you are, (laughs) but anyway, no, he was great. great. So, you know, the whole thing really came together. We're just so happy that it, that it did, that it it worked out. Yeah. I'm so excited to, to present this. Me too. And I just feel like this is such, I mean, this is the perfect thing that I try to talk about in my vlog. Anyhow, is this idea of, of collaborative projects. Like this is, feels to me like a wonderful ultimate collaborative project where also things kind of fell in the place where they were supposed to fall. And it sort of has this like sort of magic elements where you're like, cool, that's because, you know, collaboration, it's collaboration at its best. So to both of you, thank you so much for your friendship and your collaboration. What a, what a delight, what a great thing we've created. I love it. (laughs) I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Jenny, thank you too. Thank you for being so open, first of all, to the idea of working with me all the, you know, two years ago um, and, and just kind of embracing this project and, and Carla too, for coming on and just working your magic with work. Well, thank you for trusting me to do this first time ever of uh, genre of, po- of poetry in a way. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. And I feel that, you know, we talk about this collaboration that's the three of us. 
and and your husband Tom and the videographer and then all those women who stories we're telling are actually our collaborators yeah in this so um, we carry we carry them with us as well into this um, they're here um, they were they made it they made it happen you know I know for me in terms of, of the lyric absolutely that's we're beautiful right that. yeah that that they're part of this collaboration and yeah and and a women sort of a women empowering story that we're telling here and to remind you know to remind people what women do to support and lift up their communities. So I'm real glad that we can honor, honor people in this way. So it's exciting. (laughs) So, well, again, thank you both so much for joining me on my vlog here and for you all uh, getting ready for IDRS, or if you didn't know about IDRS, welcome to the world of double reads, Um, international double read society, IDRS.org. You can find the whole schedule for the festival. And then ours is going to be performed on Tuesday, July 27th at 2 PM Eastern, 11 AM Pacific and all the times in between. (laughs) So come, come and join us for the premiere of sisters of the COVID moon. So thank you both so much. Thank and you. Yay. And we will, uh, we will, we will collaborate more. <laughs> we will. Thanks everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.